grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Though people may be joining us from many regions, we acknowledge that the Church of St. Stephen in the Fields stands on occupied land, the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat and Petun nations, land covered by the dish with one spoon wampum belt covenant. Treaty 13 and the Williams Treaty are also relevant to this territory. We acknowledge that we have broken the treaties. We acknowledge the damage done by colonialism and the role that our church has played in this. And we pledge ourselves to work for a future of justice and reconciliation. Where charity and love prevail, there God is ever found, brought here to gather by Christ's love, by love are we thus bound, with grateful joy and holy fear. His charity revealed. Let us with heart and mind and strength now love him in return. Forgive us now each other's faults as we are but confessed. Let us love each other well in Christian holiness. Let strife among us be unknown. Let all contention cease. He is the glory that we seek. Be ours in holy peace. Let us recall that in our midst dwells God's begotten Son as members of his body joined. We are in him made one. Love can exclude no race or creed. If honored be God's name, common by fair graces all whose father is the same. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desire is known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. 
Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, everybody. Peace. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace to all. Peace, everybody. Peace, everyone. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, healed the sick and restored them to wholeness of life. Look with compassion on the anguish of the world, and by your power make whole all peoples and nations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord, they shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. 
It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. But a lighter than the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. Now, if, pro if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that he raised Christ. Whom did he raise if it is true that the dead are not raised? For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came down with the twelve apostles and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured, and all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you. Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I have to say at the outset I'm not going to address the um, current bizarre and frightening situation in which the country is finding itself, at least not directly. Um, perhaps in a week or so I will find a way to do that. I am hoping that uh, it will speak in some way indirectly because what the gospel says is always, always relevant in some way. The, uh, the section of Jesus' teaching, which is commonly called the Beatitudes, is fairly well known. It's better known in, in Mark and Matthew's version. It has cultural currency outside the church, um, if only through Monty Python. Most people have heard something about the meek inheriting the earth or the peacemakers being blessed. Luke's version is, is a bit different, uh, not quite as well known. It includes a, a, sh a somewhat shorter list of blessings and uh, a matching list of woes. And I think Luke's version is, is valuable for a few reasons, one of them being that it, it helps to cut through ways in which the Beatitudes have been misunderstood and misused. The common English translations of Mark and Matthew's Beatitudes are often read as if they were a sort of bland instruction on how to be nice. The kind of polite and empty niceness, which we have all too often somehow confused with Christian faith. I can't tell you how many sermons I've heard in which the underlying message is we should all be nice to each other, because Jesus was nice. Jesus was frequently not nice. He broke all the rules of social deportment. He, he rarely spoke politely to anyone. He forced questions. He took people into all kinds of places they didn't want to go, and there's very little that's nice about any of this. Jesus was truthful, compassionate, vulnerable, challenging, profoundly loving, deeply human in a way which most human beings cannot approach. 
but usually not especially nice. And the Beatitudes actually do capture this if we read them properly, um, and particularly pay attention to the Greek. I've spoken about this before. But Luke's blessings and woes may be a little less easy to misunderstand. They're built on a central paradox, which we often miss, again, partly because of the translation from Greek to English, and partly because it is a paradox embedded in a culture which was deeply and explicitly built on a code of honor and shame, which isn't to say that our culture isn't, but we are less explicit about it. The word translated blessed is the Greek makarios, which really means something more like honorable, estimable, socially valued. While the word translated poor, um, ptokos, means not only lacking in money, but lacking in social place, family support, esteem. It is a word which suggests not only deep, deep lack, but also shame in the terms of the culture of the day. The blessings then are deliberately contradictory. The honorable ones are those without honor, without power, the small wretched of the earth. And similarly with the woes, one scholar has suggested that woe to might better be translated as shame on, shame on the rich the self-obsessed, shame on those who are happy in the midst of the despair of the hungry. These are the ones who are truly disreputable. In Luke's version, though there's an earlier mention of a crowd, this seems to be a teaching directed specifically at the disciples. And it is somewhat troubling news for them that if they persist in this commitment they have recently made, if they are really going to live out the values of the kingdom of God, they are going to be very small in the eyes of the world. They will weep, for they will be exposed to all the pain of humanity and have no idols or illusions to shield them. They will be weak and disregarded. Neither then nor now was the renunciation of honor or power ever encouraged. Now, as then, we are constantly striving to protect and increase our status, our place, to advance our own interests against those of others, to protect our own corner. But the values by which God views us are very different, and that is apparently what the disciples need to know. An interesting detail in the text is that Jesus looks up at the disciples. Either they are somehow standing on a nearby hill, although it's been described as a level place, or Jesus has at some point gotten down on the ground. Most depictions of Jesus' teaching have a kind of upward slope to Jesus sitting on a hill, the focus of attention the most elevated. Jesus is sitting on the ground, lower than the disciples, down with the sick, the broken, the children, all the little ones sitting in the dirt. He is taking a position which is pointedly and deliberately lower. He is placing himself, as he consistently did, with those who are vulnerable and alone, those who are lacking in status, saying that this is the place which is truly valuable. Those who are increasingly being deemed the acceptable victims of living with the virus, the poor who don't have the resources to protect themselves, the sick and the disabled and the very old, these are the center of God's concern. So in what way does this matter? in many ways, but I'm going to look at the passage, uh, which is difficult for modern sensibilities, from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians and see how these two texts speak to each other. 
Paul insists here that this is not just the story of a good man who died. There are many of those stories. Sadly, there are more all the time. According to Paul, and according to the Gospel writers, this is a story of something more than that, something which redefines the boundaries of possibility. The story of the resurrection is, is hard for modern minds. For many, it is the great sticking point in the Christian narrative. And I am not really concerned about exactly what happened to the molecular structure of Jesus' earthly body after he died. I don't think we can understand the exact detail of what happened to and among the disciples at Easter, except that they experienced it as something unprecedented and amazing, something which changed everything they had understood about limit and death. I am content to leave the details as a mystery. The important point is what the story says. And what the resurrection says is that the story is somehow not over. Many good people have died bravely and it has helped us very little. And clearly, whatever we may believe about God's viewpoint, the rich in this world have very little shame, and the desperately poor have very little of anything we might call blessing. But there is a horizon of possibility beyond us, and love is not done working. God, to paraphrase Julian of Norwich, has performed a great act, and yet, has a great act still to perform. The resurrection is more than anything else God's statement that you cannot kill love, that love is stronger than power and stronger than death. God in our human flesh, ultimate love in our human world, took on the worst that the world can offer, took on all the violence and selfishness and brokenness of our human condition accepted abandonment and torture, received all that into God's own being and loved and forgave it all, and rising again, redeemed it all. And this means that possibility is not closed off, that hope is somehow not futile, that failure is somehow not the end. We have not reached the end of the story. We may not ourselves see the end of the story, not in this life. But it is in the movement of this story that we can understand why the losers and the lost are important, why the man who sat down in the dirt may overcome the dreams of power, why the surrender of our own comforts and privileges for the sake of the well-being of all is where we find our salvation. The downward movement of humility is also, in some inexpressible way, the upward movement of resurrection and new life. Any kind of belief in resurrection, however defined or understood, has to wrestle with the fact that evidence of it in the world is very slight. Maybe the point of being church, though, is that we are supposed to be that evidence for now. We haven't done very well at it, but our basic calling is to be the body, the community, that shows the hints and suggestions and potentials of life and love, of the true freedom which is found in community, of resurrection. That is how resurrection is supposed to come into the world right now in this time between times. It is supposed to come through us. So there is no real point in worrying about how scarce the signs of resurrection are because we are supposed to be those signs ourselves. It's a tremendous task and one in which we will fail more often than not. But there you go. We are. We must be, if we are doing what we are meant to do, the misfits, the losers, 
the small, the failures in the world's eyes. And we are also the frail, persistent promise of a new world in which all this pain is reconciled. We must be these things because we are here and because we are needed. A tree with roots in a hidden stream of hope, green in the time of drought, the small and impossible sign of growth and life. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us come to ask for the healing touch of our God in the church and in the world. To the bidding, blessed are those who trust in the Lord, the response is, good physician, heal us. Good physician, heal us. God of humility, you desire to save us. May your will, may we be willing to, sh may we be willing to, sh may you be willing to share our human brokenness as the body of Christ. May the church share that willingness to be vulnerable in order to serve in love. We ask your blessings upon our leaders who teach us and inspire us every day. Archbishop Andrew, Mother Maggie, Mother Andrea, and Deacon Elizabeth. Keep them safe and healthy and let their light shine upon us. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. Good physician, heal us. God of power, your authority is gracious and merciful. Inspire all those with authority in our world to be prompted by you so that they may open the way for your kingdom to be established. We pray for the leaders of all nations to come together for the purpose of healing, ecologically, economically, physically, and spiritually. We pray that decisions may be made based on science rather than for political purposes. May those who have share healing with those who are in need. May all realize that living with the virus does not mean being ignorant of its existence. 
We pray for peace throughout the world and for safety for all. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. Good physician, heal us. God of accepting love, drive far from our homes and communities all rejection and devaluing, all discrimination, all justification for barriers, and give us the courage to reach out in love. We pray in love for our parish family, especially for Zoe Henderson, Blake Hensridge, Maggie and Simone Helwig and Ken Simons, Helga Holland, Adonica Huggins and Atiba Flurry Huggins, Jessica Humphreys and Finn, Charlie Huskin, Marguerite Hunt, Vincent and Rebecca Hunt, Christy, Raphael, Raphael Jr. and Regis Ionegbo. May good health and safety and accepting environment be inherent in their lives. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. Good physician, heal us. God of compassion, shock us into seeing more clearly the aches of those whom society rejects and overlooks, the wound of the discarded and socially embarrassing. May we reach out when others run away. We bring to mind those caught up in the frenetic pressures of life and those who are stressed to the breaking point, remembering the lost, the homeless, and all who suffer through war and injustice. We pray for insight and courage to change things and give thanks for all who have helped us get through this extremely difficult period of our lives. This week, healing prayers are asked for Phyllis, Vanesta, Becky, Alex, Teja, Damian, Tanis, Beck, Lovina, Michael, Victor, Kadim, Kim, Marvin, Ed, Roy, Andrew, Leone, Dave, Sue Ann, Terry, Jean, Alicia, Georgina, Andy Alley, Maria, Cheryl, Emily, George, Rena, Laura, Shirley, Darla, the Huggins family, Catherine, Allison, Tucker, Father Bob, Nick and Megan, and the Kobaya Kawa family, and Marg, and the De Silva family. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. Good physician, heal us. We ask your blessing upon those who live their lives enacting your word. In the Canadian Church, we pray for the Right Reverend Sam Rose, Bishop and the people and clergy of the Diocese of Eastern Newfoundland and Labrador. In our Diocese for Mississauga Deanery, in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, for the Dean, Council, and Congregations of the Central Toronto Area and Greater Toronto Area, East and West of the Eastern Synod, and internationally for the Nippon Se Kokai. We give thanks and pray for the outreach and advocacy work of Holy Trinity, Trinity Square, its daily meal program, offering food, hygiene, harm reduction supplies, encampment support, shelter, and housing advocacy, its homeless memorial, refugee sponsorship and advocacy, and its partnership with Toronto Urban Native Ministry and Trinity Square Cafe. For the Church of the Incarnation, its support of local food banks, the North Yorkers for Disabled Persons Group Home, Flemington Park Ministry, the Pekangakum First Nation Water Project, Inoke Brick Stick School of Suicide Prevention Program, Canadian Food for Children, Monthly Seniors Lunch, and Community Garden. And for the parish of Lloydstown, its support of King Township Food Bank, Christmas in King Community Initiative, and Schomburg Country Run Stopping the Pekangagum Water Project. May their efforts not go unnoticed and may they inspire others to enjoy and in, join together to heal and prepare. 
Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. Good physician, heal us. God of eternity, we remember those who, healed forever, live with you in the fullness of life. Remembering Akiko Kobaikawa and Benito da Silva and those who have lost their lives through acts of violence, foreign or domestic, or by their own hand. We pray that we too may come by your grace to share the life which has no ending. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And may light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the extent of your love, which has no limits and no exceptions. We ask that you accept these prayers in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Eternal God, Lord of all time and space, the Lord's words of truth and righteousness and grace, we thank Thee for Thy majesty sublime, Thou dost reveal in every human we thank thee, Lord, for love's deep fount of joy, for inward peace that never can be told. For comradeship no changes can destroy, for faith and hope that all our days unfold. For love, you, for love unique makes us, us one with thee, holding hearts according to the will, enabling hearts in true humanity. The purpose of thy kingdom to fulfill. Fixed deeper than the source of human strife, may we in love our steadfast anchor find. Unchanging through the stress of life, to thine own love, our hearts forever bind. Let us pray. Eternal God, you are the strength of the weak and the comfort of sufferers. Receive all we offer you this day. Turn our sickness into health and our sorrow into joy. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you, lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God. Creator of heaven and earth, we give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to 
give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and 
deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Let us pray. God of tender care, in this Eucharist we celebrate your love for us and for all people. May we show your love in our lives and know its fulfillment in your presence. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see our God. The secret of the Lord is that their soul is Christ's abode. The Lord who left the heavens a life and peace to bring to dwell in holy with us a pattern and a king ah to the lowly soul his presence doth impart and for a dwelling place and throne Chooseth the pure in heart. Lord, we thy presence seek. May us this blessing be. Give us a pure and lowly heart, a temple fit for thee. Go 
forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you, everyone. Um, there's a little bit of a switch in our order of uh, weekly events. The discussion group, the Cloud of Unknowing discussion group, as it currently is, is moving to Wednesday evenings. So we don't have anything going on on Monday. Um, we have the Bible study and meditation Tuesday at 7.30 on Zoom with uh, 20 minutes of silent meditation and discussion of the Gospel for the coming Sunday. And then Wednesday at 7, the Cloud of Unknowing discussion group, uh, also on Zoom. Um, at, it will happen this week, then for a few reasons there will be a couple of weeks break, and uh, then it will pick up again. Um, two weeks from today, Sunday the 27th, will be our vestry meeting. So everyone take note, be there, it will be on Zoom immediately after the Sunday service. So if you attend the Sunday service on Zoom, you just have to stay there and you will be at vestry. If you do not normally attend the Sunday service on Zoom, um, I urge you to find a way to be there because it, it, it is an important uh, annual parish meeting to look at the financials, the budget, the officers of the parish for the coming year, the social justice motion for the year. So that is two weeks from today, February 27th. Um, the Wednesday after that is Ash Wednesday, and we are hoping that that will be the day that we resume in-person services. It, it seems best to stay on Zoom through Vestry, because that's the more accessible medium. But the hope, uh, if things continue well, is that we will resume in-person services on Ash Wednesday, and then after that, for Lent, we will resume the pattern of Saturday evening Mass on Zoom and Sunday morning Mass in person. That's still, you know, that's not 100%, but that's what we're aiming at. So you can bear that in mind also. And it also looks fairly certain that we will have a standing vaccine clinic at the church for about six weeks, roughly during Lent, in fact, on Mondays from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. most likely. Uh, I think that is uh, everything that I have to announce. Thank you to everyone who uh, participated in the service, and thank you to everyone joining us on all of our platforms. If you are here with us on Zoom, then please just stay on after the postlude ends for coffee hour and uh, an informal chat. And if you're not on Zoom, consider joining us on Zoom so that you can join us for coffee hour. Thank you. <laughs>